NASA just rewrote the file. This isn't a press release designed for the evening news. This isn't a flashy headline on a website. It is something much quieter and much more disturbing. Today, a bureaucratic update was pushed to the official status designation of our interstellar visitor. To the untrained eye, it looks like paperwork, just another line of data in a server full of orbital parameters. But if you know the code, if you know how to read between the lines of scientific caution, you realize that a frantic signal just went out to observatories across the globe. Until this morning, the classification was standard. The object was described as stable, routine, a single nucleus coasting through its departure phase. Basically, nothing to see here. As of today, that language is gone, deleted. The new designation uses two specific phrases that should send a chill down your spine, dynamically evolving and structurally stressed. Let's translate that into plain English. NASA isn't saying this object might break. They are flagging that the process has already started. The data has crossed a threshold. We are no longer watching a dead rock floating through space. We are watching a structural failure in real time. The object is struggling to hold itself together. And I'm going to show you exactly why. I'm going to show you the three specific data points, the spin, the shape, and the orbit that forced NASA to pull the alarm. Because once you see them, you'll understand that we might be days away from watching an alien world disintegrate before our eyes. To understand the danger, you have to look at the heartbeat of the comet. Astronomers call it the light curve. It's a simple concept. As the object tumbles through space, sunlight hits its different faces. Bright side, dim side, long side, short side. From Earth, we see this as a rhythmic pulsing of light. Flash, fade, flash, fade. For weeks, that heartbeat was steady, rock solid. Astronomers had calculated the rotation period down to the second. It was rotating like a clock, predictable, consistent, safe. But then the drift started. At first it was subtle, tiny variations in the timing, the kind of thing you dismiss as noise or atmospheric interference. But the noise didn't go away. It got louder. The newest data shows a pattern that is impossible to ignore. The flashes are arriving earlier, and earlier, and earlier. The rotation period isn't just drifting, it is shortening, rapidly. Think about what that means physically. We are talking about a mountain-sized object, kilometers across, spinning in the void. And something is pushing it to spin faster, and faster, and faster. In physics, we call this spin-up. And for a comet, it is usually a death sentence. Because objects in space don't just accelerate their spin by magic. Energy is being pumped into the system. Torque is being applied. Imagine a spinning top that, instead of slowing down, suddenly starts whirring violently. That is what's happening right now. The centrifugal force is building. The gravity holding this loose pile of rubble together is fighting a losing battle against the desire to fly apart. Now, if this was just a math problem, we could argue about the models. We could say, maybe the data is wrong. But we don't have that luxury, because while the orbit team was staring at the numbers, the imaging team looked at the pictures. And the pictures tell the same terrifying story. I want you to visualize the core of this comet. Last week, high contrast images showed a standard nucleus. Round, fuzzy, a smooth glowing ball of gas and dust like a healthy comet should look. Today, it's unrecognizable. The newest deep exposure images, stacked from the world's most powerful telescopes, show a distortion. The core isn't round anymore. It is pinched. It is stretched. It looks like a dumbbell or a piece of taffy being pulled by invisible hands. You can see two distinct lobes of brightness trying to separate. And between them, a thin, desperate bridge of light Material that is barely hanging on, but it gets worse. Look at the coma, the atmosphere around the nucleus. It's filled with ripple arcs. These are faint, concentric waves expanding outward. These aren't steady streams of gas. These are shock waves. They are the forensic evidence of violent bursts, pulses, explosions. It means the venting isn't smooth. It's coughing. It's sputtering. It's blasting out material in discrete, violent events that shake the entire foundation of the object. So, the math says it's spinning too fast. 
and the images show it's starting to tear down the middle. So the big question is, why now? Why is this happening after it passed the sun? Common sense says the danger zone was months ago, at perihelion, when it was closest to the heat. It survived that. It's moving away now. It's cooling down. So why is it breaking now? The answer lies in something called thermal lag, and it's the most dangerous trap in the solar system. A comet nucleus isn't a solid rock. It's a dirty snowball. Layers of ice, dust, and rock. The surface reacts to the sun immediately. But the deep interior? The deep interior is insulated. It takes time for the heat to sink in. Weeks, maybe months. Heat moves slowly through the crust. Inch by inch. Layer by layer. So while the surface is freezing over again, that pulse of heat from months ago has finally reached the core. It has reached ancient pockets of volatile ice that have been frozen for millions of years, deep inside, pressurized. And suddenly, they are sublimating, turning from solid ice to explosive gas in a fraction of a second. This is a time bomb that was lit months ago, and it just hit zero. These new vents are blasting out with incredible force, and because they are firing from deep inside and likely off-center, they are acting like rocket thrusters. That is where the torque comes from. That is what is spinning the comet. The object is literally destroying itself from the inside out. So what happens next? NASA's structurally stressed designation is a polite way of saying, we are watching a coin flip. We are looking at two timelines, and both are possible. Timeline A. The internal vents exhaust themselves, the pockets run out of fuel, the spin stabilizes before the critical limit is reached, the object warps, it scars, it changes shape permanently, but it survives. It leaves our solar system as a mutated version of itself, carrying the wounds of its encounter with our sun. Timeline B, the spin keeps climbing. The centrifugal force overpowers the gravity holding the rubble together. The bridge of light snaps. And the object disrupts. It doesn't just crack, it shatters. We would see a massive brightening event, a super flare, as fresh ice is exposed to sunlight all at once. And then it fades, turning from a single visitor into a cloud of shrapnel and dust, a ghost fleet drifting into the dark, to be clear. The death certificate hasn't been signed yet. The object is fighting. It is holding on. But the safe, boring story is over. We are no longer tracking a trajectory. We are tracking a survival story. Is it adapting or is it unraveling? Every telescope that can point is pointing. Every antenna is listening. We are waiting for the next data packet. We are waiting for the next light curve. Because whatever happens next, we are the only witnesses this object will ever have. Stay tuned. The universe is speaking. We just need to listen. In Cosmos, we trust.